one of the things that I got out of postural restoration is that a lot of times our compensations are our superpowers. So I'll give the example in powerlifting, which is a really easy one. You typically see people with either a really squatty deadlift or a really uh, deadlifty squat. So what I mean by that is like, you'll see some people have a very vertical spine when they're squatting, and then they also have a very vertical spine. And you'll, usually you'll see more sumo style uh, deadlift because they're, you know, they're very quad dominant, let's say. And the other people are very glute and hamstring dominant. So do you see the same thing neurologically where, you know, the chess player might n- need to have an overdeveloped, let's say, cerebellum or uh, frontal cortex for that logical thinking? And that superpower, that, you know, overdeveloped, whatever, you know, could be their glutes, it could be a third part of the brain, probably both, is needed for them to be, to achieve the level of success that they want to achieve. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. If there's one common trend I've seen working with elite level athletes, and then by that, I mean, people that are paid to play their sport, not just people that are hobbyists, but people that are like, no, this is my career. Elite level athletes are master compensators. When you look at them, they are able to perform some amazing human feats. And then when you test them, you're like, how are you alive? How are you able to function in the world? Because some of these brain areas are not working, but a lot of times it's enough of the perfect storm of genetics and anatomy and environment and all the sports they played growing up to get them to that point of being so good at compensation that they found their niche and they stuck with it and they don't even care about some of these other things in their life whether they realize it's not supposed to be that way or not. So one of my favorite studies, uh, they showed some major league baseball players. I think it was baseball. It was either baseball or uh, basketball. I'm pretty sure it was baseball. They did MRIs of their shoulders, showed them these catastrophic shoulder injuries. And they showed them to some physicians and the phys- or the orthopedic surgeons. They said, 32 out of 33 of these, we would do surgery on right away. They didn't know who the shoulders belonged to. And then they said, oh, these are all major league pitchers currently throwing with that shoulder. They didn't even know that it was a problem. They were just like, no, I'm super awesome, crazy fast pitcher. Their shoulder looks like garbage in there, but they're still functioning. Whereas you or I might be like, oh, I I tweaked that a little when I slept funny. I need to go get a uh, cortisone shot. No, they're just like out there rocking because their brain has created such a compensatory state. And a lot of it too, I think, is there, there's a psychological aspect in that situation of even if I did get the surgery, it would cost me my downtime and some of my career pay, and I'm not going to do it. So of course, there's a psychological underpinning to how people respond to those kind of situations. But as far as elite athletes are concerned, their brain function matters quite a bit for why they are the way they are and are able to compensate the way they do. 